Hey y'all, Bill Quirk with the Defensive Training Group and Big Daddy Unlimited here to do another video. And this time we're going to be talking about the differences between defensive ammunition and our training ammunition. Just explaining the whys and the wherefores and why you're going to choose one for which application. So typically speaking, for training, recreation, competition and whatnot, we're going to use full metal jacket. And what that means is that the, the, uh, the projectile, the bullet itself, has got this consistent metal jacket, usually copper, that covers the entire top of the bullet. Now, a full metal jacket, usually the, 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 lead, the uh, base is going to be exposed lead. You can get TMJ, which the base is covered with a jacket as well. But uh, your typical full metal jacket is just going to be the exposed portion that you can see when you handle the cartridge. On the other end of the spectrum, we've got our JHP, jacketed hollow point, And this is what we're going to normally use for defensive purposes. So we're going to get into that. So the reason that we use our full metal jacket is uh, normally it's less expensive. Uh, of course, that these days that's not necessarily the case, but in ordinary times, this is going to be less expensive than your jacket at hollow point. And uh, these are also very reliable in most semi-automatic pistols because they are a nice, smooth, rounded shape. And that's going to be relevant for some of our, our discussions in a second as well. With your standard full metal jacket, you may get a little bit more of a point of impact shift at times. Because the uh, velocities may not be as consistent, they're perfectly safe to run, but because they are more of your, your economy ammunition in normal circumstances, there may be a bit more variance shot to shot that uh, if you're a good enough shooter, you may actually see that. So the hollow point, on the other hand, the hollow point, like I said, this is for defensive uses. And a couple of things to think about. First of all, uh, usually a bit more accurate because these are the premium loads. So a bit more quality control goes into them. Like I said, perfectly safe to shoot. I'm not suggesting otherwise. But a uh, bit more consistency in shot to shot. So that is going to produce a bit more accuracy, again, if you are good enough that you can actually uh, capitalize on that. The big thing about the hollow point is the way that it is designed to respond in soft tissue. And this is why we use it for defensive purposes. So if I was to give you an example, if I was to give you a grapefruit and have you hold it in your hand and take an ice pick and stab into the grapefruit, you'd be like, I don't want to do that because you know it's going to go straight through the grapefruit and it's going to stab you in the hand. Not a whole lot of energy transfer as the point goes through the, the fruit and it's going to hit you in the hand. That's going to be your full metal jacket. Nice pointed tip and not a whole lot of energy transfer as it goes through whatever is in front of it. There's a good chance it's going to continue all the way through. Your hollow point, on the other hand, is designed to expand when it hits that soft tissue. And so what it does, I have here, this is 147 grain Federal HST, and this is a shot 147 grain Federal HST that was fired out of a service pistol, in this case a CZP07, at about five yards through a pork roast. And uh, this one did not go all the way through and we were able to autopsy it out of the pork roast. This is a, uh, a demonstration I do in some of my classes where we will get the pork roast and we shoot it first with full metal jacket and then we get a second one, shoot it with the hollow point and then a third one that we shoot with a standard defensive response of three to six rounds of hollow point just to see what they do and to illustrate in a very graphic way for the students why we do what we do. And after we shoot each piece, we bring it back and autopsy it, look at the wound channel, look at how much energy was transferred to the flesh itself, and uh, recover any projectiles that are in there. And we'll talk about that in a second because that's also important. So because this is designed to expand, you can see you go from 0.355 of an inch nominal to this one is about 0.7 of an inch. But you can see quite a significant increase in surface area. So going back to our, our grapefruit example, so now if I gave you the same grapefruit and a hammer and told you to smack the grapefruit, you'd have no problem with that because you know the flat striking surface of the hammer is going to transfer all the energy into the fruit and not go through and strike you in the hand. That is what our hollow point is meant to do. Now this isn't about damaging the person or hurting the person or anything like that. This is about transferring energy as efficiently and effectively as possible into the target so that A, it stops the target more reliably, and B, is less likely to overpenetrate and strike something that we didn't intend. And those are two very important considerations. In a uh, previous video several months ago, we talked about the concept of CYA, which in this case, it's not what you think, it stands for can you articulate. 
Can you, as a reasonable person, explain to another reasonable person why you did what you did? And this is a good umbrella principle for us to use when we're looking at modifying guns, what guns we're going to carry, our training, and our ammunition selection. Hollow points have been presented in certain circles as being more damaging, more deadly, uh, so all sorts of, of, of uh, labels that really don't get at what we're trying to accomplish. The way I look at it, CYA can I articulate, these are the responsible choice when we're talking about defensive ammunition, using something as a defensive tool. Because when they expand, it increases the energy dump into that target, which increases the likelihood it's going to stop that target. And like I said, it decreases the possibility of it overpenetrating and striking something we didn't intend. So it really is the responsible choice. When we're uh, talking about our ammunition, I hear a lot, well, I want something that's not going to overpenetrate. And unfortunately, I'm here to tell you, you can't ever count on that. The most reliable cartridge that in test has never overpenetrated in the real world, you just don't know. The bottom line is you are responsible for every single round you fire. So paying too much attention, you can look at, the, at the pro their properties, do your research, and find something that you think is less likely to overpenetrate. But ultimately, at the end of the day, you are responsible for every round that you fire and you can't count on something not making it through. I have seen rifle cartridges fail to go through drywall. I have seen pistol cartridges go through drywall, punch through it like a hot knife through butter. You just don't know. Uh, the angle, the deflection, just luck of the draw may let it go through, may, it may stop. You just don't know you're responsible. So that's a big thing to think about. I mentioned earlier that your full metal jacket tend to be very reliable in semi-automatic pistols, nice smooth shape, they're going to feed very easy. With modern good quality semi-automatic pistols like my ATE iGlock 17 or my Langdon Tactical 92 uh, Compact here, 92G Compact, you're probably not going to have a problem at all uh, with hollow points. But just consider that because you do have this lip here, this, this ridge, that between the two, this is going to feed better. This, if you're going to have a problem, is probably more likely to where, to where you're going to see your problem. So, you need to take your gun, your hollow point, not just hollow points, but your specific hollow point that you have selected, and test that ammunition in your gun. At least 50 rounds, 250 is better. Yes, I know it's expensive. But, how valuable is your life? You want to make sure that your weapon system is going to run your ammunition. And you can't just read an article and go, oh, well, they said Glocks run with this stuff really good. Your gun, your ammunition, you got to go test them. There have been uh, examples throughout history in the past 20, 30 years where there was a good cartridge and there was a good gun among the many guns that are out there, and the two were just not compatible. This particular cartridge, based on the way this gun is set up with the feed ramp and so on and so forth, they just did not like each other. You won't know that unless you go out and actually test your gun with your ammunition. Okay, so that's a big thing to think about. Uh, the final thing to talk about is accuracy, point of aim, point of impact. Um, when you get into the ammunition, 115 grain, 147, 124, 127, different bullet weights for 9 millimeters. what I'm talking about here, but all calibers are going to have this. People get really wrapped around the axle about, well, I want everything to be the same. I want to maintain this, that, and the other. Just because your full metal jacket is 147 grain and your defensive hollow point is 147 grain, there are other variables that go in there as far as the powder, the velocity it's loaded to, all this kind of stuff. So just because it's the same weight bullet does not mean in a perfect world it's going to have the same point of impact. Ultimately, you need to go out and again, test your ammunition, know where your ammunition, your carry ammunition is going to hit. What's the point of aim? What's the point of impact? In my experience, and this is going to be a little bit of ego devastation to a lot of people, most people, myself included, do not shoot really well enough to notice too much of a difference. On a good day at 25 yards, I may notice the difference between my hollow point and my full metal jacket. Normally I run 115 grain full metal jacket and I run the 147 grain Federal HST as my defensive load. And um, on a good day at 25 yards, I may notice a difference in point of aim, point of impact. Closer in, I don't. Okay. So test it, make sure you know, see if there is a difference that you can discern, but I wouldn't worry about that too terribly much. The big thing is make sure that it is in fact reliable in your weapon system. So those are the things we wanted to talk about with defensive ammunition versus your full metal jacket. If you have any questions, put them below. If you have any comments, put them below. Uh, as always, if you like the video, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and you all stay safe.